All right, so let's look at the AC part. Now, we're going to look at, again, the only thing I'm really interested in is the gain of the different stages. So what I'm going to do just for now is I'm going to break this circuit here and make them two independent circuits, and we'll tie them together in a second. So this circuit, as it is, has nothing hang hanging off it, which means it has no load. So we're going to calculate the gain for this amplifier without a load. So the gain for uh, stage one is going to be the voltage that's created across here by the signal that comes in versus the voltage that comes in. And the voltage that comes in is the voltage that's developed across RE1 prime. But because, because we have a capacitor here, this resistor is no longer in circuit to the AC signal. The AC signal will come in and follow this path, all right? So it's essentially riding on top of the DC signal that is there. So the 0.7 doesn't even come to play. It's a, it's a DC concept, uh, concept at 0.7 volt drop. So the AC is going to ride on top of that. The voltage created here will create a voltage out of here. So if we look at what's happening here is we have uh, IE, a uh, so-called I small e, uh, all small c in this case here, current that is generated here. And that current is the same current that's going to run across the RE1 prime. So if I look at uh, ICRC, which is the output, over ICRE prime, then these two currents will cancel. And so the gain of this amplifier is going to be equal to simply no load, is simply the value of the RC circuit, 22K. So we have 22K and the ohms divided by, and RE1 prime was 80.5 ohms. And so if you do that uh, particular math, you come out with a number of 270, 273. Okay, fairly large gain. If you do a 20 log, to the base 10 of 273.3, you'll get a number more like uh, 40, uh, off the top of my head, 48.7 uh, decibels. Okay, so we actually have our first gain stage without load, no load, at 48.7 decibels. Um, we can do the same thing for AV2. We would have basically a signal in so and a signal out. So the current that we had listed here, um, we had uh, an IC current listed there, and we would divide that, uh, sorry, uh, we would take, well, we'd use the same formula. We'd use RC over RE prime 2 to come up, uh, because this current will cancel that particular uh, collector current. So again, for AB2, same kind of math, no load. So I should put here NL for no load, okay, no load. Um, is the uh, uh, same idea. Uh, so we've got uh, 10 K ohms, 10 times 10 to the 3 ohms, and we're dividing that by 55.9 ohms. Ohms will cancel, dimensionless, and you get a number like 178 point, uh, we could round it up, but let's say 8, 9 anyway. And that, as far as we'd like to see it in dB, is uh, 20 log to the base 10 of 178.89 is going to be equal to um, 45.8 decibels, one-tenth of a bell. So that's fine, but the truth is we need the signal to go from here to here. So really, what's going to happen is this value of RC is going to see a load over here. And what it sees is, it does not see this particular RC2, RE2 resistor. It doesn't see that because we have a capacitor here shorting out the AC signal. But what it does see is the RE2 prime. So now, if you look at this circuit, you've got a battery up here that goes to ground. And an AC signal, when it sees a battery, can go into the battery and come, and also current can come out of the battery. But for all intents and purposes, the battery stays at 12 volts. It's a storage facility. So from an AC signal perspective, a battery is also like a big capacitor, which is like a short circuit. That means that the RE that we have here, which goes to ground, and the RC that we have here, which hits this, which is also grounded, are in parallel. So we're going to be looking at the load 
that our that um, stage one will be seeing is our small c, which is the AC uh, determination of the R big C in parallel with the R E two prime. Okay, uh, I hope that works out for you. And so that being the case, um, now there's another small problem here. The the actual resistance in here is not just Re prime. It's multiplied by the beta of the transistor, which happens to be 125 in this case here. And why is that? If you look at the input resistance, so input is Vn over In. And if Vn is uh, basically uh, like we showed there in that circuit, And this is a current that's IB times beta, okay? If the voltage in is essentially I, in this case here, let's say IE times RE prime, and the current in is I small b, okay? The current in is small IB. What we've got is basically beta I small b RE prime. Or, sorry, let me clean that up a bit. Let me clean that up a bit. So instead of IE here, we've got beta IB. Remember, beta IB is equal to IE is equal to IC. So here we have beta IB. And these two IBs will cancel out. So the resistance looking in will be, in this case here, beta times RE prime. So we are actually in parallel, uh, 22K is in parallel with beta, 125, times the value of RE2. If we look at that, then, oops, sorry, this is, this is for this part here. Let me just uh, take this and lower it down a bit. So one more time. So with the load, with load, the uh, gain for AV1 is going to equal R uh, small c, which is Rc1 here, in parallel with beta Re2 uh, R e prime, Re2 prime, and that's going to equal, so 22k in parallel with 125 times uh, 55.9 is uh, 22k in parallel with 7k is, uh, let's see, how does that go, over 80.5. It's going to come out to, um, it's going to come out to 3.3K over 80.5. And that, when you do the math, so these are ohms, they're going to cancel, is going to be 66. And that, if you do 20 log base 10 of 66, it's going to be 34 point what do you think, four? Yeah, four makes sense, dB. So with the load, with the load, we managed to uh, change the gain from this number, 48.7, down to this because we are now connected and current is going through here, but it's also taking an alternate path through that part over there. So uh, pretty good, a pretty good um, story. Uh, you, in, and, the, and the story to understand, though, is that it's not just that RC. When you look at the formula, when you see the formula for gain, and you see RC um, over RE prime, this is a small c, which means it's an ACC, which means it's this in parallel with other loads that the AC signal sees. Okay, so that's a good start. Now, I'm going to change the circuit slightly again. And I want to do one that is uh, capacitively coupled with a stiff divider. And uh, we'll see how the numbers change with uh, that particular biasing then.